Unity is changing their subscription plans. Now I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with the 100,000 and recently updated 200,000 barrier that you had to reach before Unity started charging money from you. This usually worked through a subscription model where you had to pay Unity either yearly or monthly based on the tier of subscription that you subscribe to. Now as you can see on this table the money has actually increased over the years. So Unity is trying to make more money from everyone that is actually earning a lot of money from game development. Which, don't get me wrong, is not that bad, but it seems like they are losing money on some end, which is why they are increasing the amount of money they want from you. While Unreal Engine, on the other hand, doesn't do that. And so I've been looking around a little bit, and these are the financial numbers of Unity since it went public. Which, in 2018, it was 100 million loss. Then 2019, it was 160 million loss. Then 2020 is already 280 million, while at 2022, it is a staggering amount of 900 million. Obviously, that doesn't mean that it's only losses. As far as I heard around, it also can mean that Unity has made some acquisitions of companies, which means they had an investment to make and that is also counted as a loss. So we can't be 100% sure that these are all Unity losses. But you can also take a look at the Unity stock ever since it went public, which seemed to be November 2021, where it sits at around 156. Ever since then, it has been dropping like crazy up until November 2022 when it reached a low point of 24 euros. This could also be a big reason on why they are pushing the new guidelines. And what are these guidelines, you ask? For every unit that you sell, you start counting. And now, if you have reached over 200,000 in revenue on your game in one year and more than 200,000 installations of your game, Again, in one year, you have to start paying per installation. On Unity Personal and on Unity Plus, that would be 20 cents per installation. So basically, I guess the meta for playing the Unity game will be then, okay, I'm going to price my game so high that I don't reach this. Or I reach this, hopefully by the time I've reached this, I've made way more than 200,000 USD. Which I think is bad because you could be min-maxing your game much more. But as you do that, you will have to pay more to Unity. So do you really earn more at this point? No, you don't. You reach a diminished audience because you price your game so high. And so I've made a very simple calculation. If I take a game like, for example, Vampire Survivors, which at the current state costs 5 euros on Steam. Let's say you made Vampire Survivors. You got lucky and the game blew up. 200,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews. You sell your game for 5 bucks. Let's apply this, right? Let's say you have 5 bucks, right? And then you multiply that by 0.7. That's what you get after Steam. You have to multiply that or divide that by two, let's say for taxes. In Germany, it's about 40%. Let's not say divided by two, but 3.5 and then multiply that. You take away 40%. Let's say 40% because your game blew up. You make a lot of money. Your tax rises. That's how it works in Germany. And I would assume that it works in other countries similarly, right? We keep 60% of that. Now we have two bucks left let's say you're using unity personal right because it's your first game right 0.2 from this you're left with 1.9 you're literally losing 10 percent to unity per install so as you can see it leaves us at about 1.9 as the final result so we have to pay unity 10 percent of our income just because someone decided to install our game but it gets even worse then you ask yourself maybe well okay fine i would have to pay for installation but do i still have to pay for unity subscription plan yes you still have to pay the subscription plan as well so not only do you have to pay per installation now in addition to that you also have to pay monthly or yearly depending on the subscription plan that you choose am i so out of touch no but it gets even worse <laughs> Take a look at this Reddit post, for example. Unity wants 108% of our gross revenue. These guys right here make mobile games for kids and they have about 101 million net downloads, which means they have about 101 at minimum installations. The way their game works is essentially they give out the demo version of the game for free to everyone to download and then once you reach a certain point in the game you will then be prompted to buy the full version which costs about two to three dollars and then the parents can decide to do that or not. And since according to them they don't run any ads this is their only source of income. We can then take another look at the in-app purchases if we take the 360,000 and multiply that by like 2.5 we will get to about 100 million revenue. But that means but they still have to pay Unity 109 million of runtime fees. Which means they actually have to pay Unity because they have a successful game going for them. Which is just 
I just don't fucking understand how they could think that this is a good idea. And it's not even that they have the Unity Basic version. No, they don't have that. They're actually running on the Unity Pro, which has diminishing returns on how much you have to pay per installation. So it doesn't even matter if you have a better subscription model, because they're still going to fuck you in the ass simply because they want more money. And so the YouTuber Danny made another funny calculation. Obviously his games are free, so they will never charge him anything. But if his game games were not free, he would actually have to pay them 5.6 million dollars, <laughs> which is just an insane amount of money. And so now at this point you might ask yourself, well, what actually does count as an installation? What about if you reinstall the game? Does that count too? So first of all in the Q&A, if you ask them how they're going to collect the installation data, they can't really tell you. Basically the only thing they say is we leverage our own proprietary data model. We believe it gives an accurate determination of the number of times the runtime is distributed for a given project. Which basically means they can't tell you because if they tell you then it can be exploited. And this is a common thing in software development not only for these guys. You don't want to make it easy for a hacker to potentially hack you. Which is why I'm on their side with this. If they tell you what they know or what they're going to do then someone out there will definitely exploit them. But the problem is that reinstallations also count. So if someone that has already bought your game in the past and has decided to switch computers or uninstall the game because he doesn't have any space on his fucking hard drive anymore like for example i don't have that much space so i keep on reinstalling games this will count too and this is what i find ridiculous so you might think that oh 200,000 and 200,000 installations that's great as long as i earn more than a dollar let's say five dollars per game installation i'm good because i can now earn more money as a small creator that is true but you also have to take into account the reinstallations and if their data collection is bad then you are at their mercy and at the same time someone can go and fuck you over simply by creating a bot that reinstalls the game multiple times and then take a game like vampire survivors for example who already only owns about two dollars or two euros per sold copy and then take away another 20 cents and then take away another 20 cents because you keep reinstalling the game what you're left with at some point is you have to pay unity and so at that point you make tickets because you think you're being exploited and then you are at the mercy of unity figuring out what's happening and so i think this system is very dangerous because it takes away all of the power that you have and gives it to Unity. And they can't be open about it, because if Unity is open about it, then it leaves them open to attack. And so yeah, as Ludwig already points out in his video, the big companies are starting to leave Unity, or they're considering it, because they don't feel safe anymore. Many look at the option of Godot, for example, which lets you create games for free. Obviously, it is not Unity, and you write in C++. But I think it is a good alternative, and if I myself wasn't programming in C++, I would have most likely started in Godot. So yeah, I guess I'm happy I'm not using Unity. While I started out with Unity, I went over to C++. Everything I make, I own myself. And uh, maybe it is a good idea to switch over to Godot in the future. We'll have to see if it actually goes through. I have a feeling that since the pushback they have received, they also have made some changes already, which means that they are willing to change what they are doing. But even if they roll back this change entirely now, it just means that they have broken trust and now in the future they might not be as trustworthy as they were before so yeah i hope you have a great day and uh, keep making games new devlogs coming out soon have a good one peace